One of the most contentious issues in Australian politics is Labour's proposed cap on negative gearing. Negative gearing is a tax arrangement that allows investors to deduct the costs of owning an income-producing asset, such as a rental property, from their taxable income. This reduces their tax liability and can result in a net loss that can be offset against other income sources. Currently, there is no limit on how many properties an investor can negatively gear, as long as they can show that they are making a genuine effort to earn income from them. However, Labour wants to change this by limiting negative gearing to one investment property per person. This means that investors who already own more than one property would not be able to claim any deductions for their existing properties, unless they are newly built. Labour says that this policy would only apply to properties purchased after a certain date, and that existing investments would be grandfathered, meaning they would not be affected by the change. Labour argues that its policy would make housing more affordable for first home buyers and low income earners, by reducing the demand and competition from investors. It also claims that it would generate more revenue for the government, by reducing the amount of tax concessions given to wealthy property owners. Labour estimates that its policy would save $32 billion over a decade. However, the policy has been strongly opposed by the coalition government, the property industry, and some economists. They argue that Labour's policy would have negative consequences for the housing market and the economy. They say that it would reduce the supply and quality of rental properties by discouraging investment in new housing. They also warn that it would lower property prices and rents by creating a two-tiered market where existing properties are less attractive than new ones. This could hurt existing homeowners and investors, especially those who rely on rental income or capital gains for their retirement. The debate over Labour's proposed cap on negative gearing is likely to continue until the next federal election, which is due by May 2024. The outcome of the election could have a significant impact on the future of Australia's housing market and tax system. Labour's policy of limiting negative gearing to new properties and having the capital gains tax discount would have significant effects on housing needs and prices in Australia. In this section, we will analyze the potential impacts of the cap on different segments of the housing market, such as first home buyers, renters, landlords, developers and builders. First home buyers are the group that would benefit the most from Labour's policy. By reducing the tax incentives for investors to buy existing properties, the policy would lower the demand and competition for these properties, making them more affordable and accessible for first home buyers. According to a report by the Grattan Institute, Labour's policy could increase home ownership rates by up to 3 percentage points, especially among younger and lower income households. Renters are another group that would benefit from Labour's policy but not as much as first home buyers. The policy would increase the supply of new rental properties, as investors would shift their focus to new construction. This would put downward pressure on rents, especially in areas with high vacancy rates. However, the impact on rents would be modest and gradual, as most existing rental properties would remain unaffected by the policy. The Grattan Institute estimates that rents could fall by up to 2% over a decade under Labour's policy. Landlords are the group that would lose the most from Labour's policy. The policy would reduce their after-tax returns from investing in existing properties, making them less attractive and profitable. Some landlords may choose to sell their properties or increase their rents to compensate for the lower returns. However, these responses would be limited by market conditions and tenant demand. The policy would also reduce the capital gains that landlords could expect from selling their properties in the future, as property prices would grow more slowly under the policy. Developers and builders are the group that would have mixed effects from Labour's policy. On one hand, the policy would stimulate demand for new construction, as investors would seek to take advantage of the negative gearing benefits for new properties. This would create more opportunities and revenue for developers and builders, especially in areas with strong population growth and housing demand. On the other hand, the policy would reduce demand for existing properties, which may affect some developers and builders who also operate in this segment of the market. 
In summary, Labor's policy of capping negative gearing and having the capital gains tax discount would have different impacts on different segments of the housing market. The policy would benefit first home buyers and renters by making housing more affordable and accessible. The policy would hurt landlords by reducing their returns and capital gains from investing in existing properties. The policy would have mixed effects on developers and builders by stimulating demand for new construction but reducing demand for existing properties.